Thank you very much for joining us today in our continuing series on Sage 100 production management. Today, we're gonna to talk about completion transactions. Let's take a look at our agenda. So before we talk about completion entry, we're gonna take a look at a couple of reports that we feel are pretty important. One's called the on-demand missing cost report, and one is called the on-demand variance from standards report. After looking at these reports, we'll go ahead and do some completion entries. Basically, we'll do a couple of them without backflush processing and one with backflush processing. Let's go ahead and take a look at this in Sage 100. So here we are in Sage 100, and let's talk about completion entries. So the purpose of doing the completion entry is to put the finished good that you've been working on into inventory. So as we talked about before, we've accumulated all the costs, primarily material and labor costs, and now we're ready to put the completed item into inventory. But each work ticket has a budget, and before we put the completed item into inventory, it's a good idea to see how we're tracking against that budget for that work ticket, and there are a couple of different ways to do that. The first way we're gonna talk about is looking at the reporting. So I'm gonna go into production management, open up the reports, and we're gonna take a look at the on-demand missing cost report. And what this report is going to show us is any costs that were planned on this work ticket that have not taken place. So this will give us an idea if there are missing transactions. That is, we plan to use some material and we haven't used that material, or we plan to do a certain amount of labor and we haven't used that labor. And all we're trying to do here is to make sure that all of the costs that we intended to have on the work ticket are in fact on the work ticket before we do the completion entry. So when we look at this report, there's a couple of fields here I just wanna talk about. One is you can put a variance percent here. So at 10% as an example, it's only gonna show us any variances that are greater than 10%. So if the variance is less than 10%, it's not gonna show up on the report. So we've made the decision if we are within 10% of our planned budget for labor and material, we're not gonna show it as a missing cost on the particular report. And then for the work ticket statuses, we're gonna look at a released work ticket, but you can also look at closed work tickets as well. So let's just take a quick look at the report. So I'm gonna select this work ticket, just the one, and we'll preview the report. And as you can see here, when we look at the report, we have step information along with item information and labor information on what was budgeted or planned and how many were required for material and then how much cost we thought we were gonna use versus the actual amount of cost. So you can see here, most of our costs are running about 50% of what we planned. And you'll see in a moment, the reason for that is we have completed half of the material that we plan to complete, just as it works out. So this is the missing cost report to give you an idea of variance. The other one to look at is the variance from standards report. So let's go ahead and do the same thing here. And once again, you'll see that you can have variance percent as the minimum variance percent. And we'll just take a quick look at this report again for the same work ticket. So in this case, it breaks out the material and the labor in separate sections on the report and gives you an idea what the actual cost is versus the standard cost or plan cost and what the variance is and then the percentages. Now, when we do the completion entry, you'll see that those reports can be printed automatically. My advice is to make sure you look at the reports before you do the completion entry, because they will print after you do the completion entry in case there's costs there that you've missed and you can still go add those costs back to the work ticket. But if you've done the final completion and you add those costs back in the work ticket, those costs are not gonna end up in the finished goods, but they can end up hosting the work ticket. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and take a look at this work ticket for a moment that we're going to do the completion entry for. We'll call this work ticket up. And as you can see here, we had planned to produce 20 and we've completed 10. And we can look at the totals, for example, and we can see what our budget versus our current and variances are here as well. So this is another way just to kind of make sure that you're tracking the material and costs that you intend. Of course, you can go look at the materials tab as an example, 
and you can see that we required 20 and we've issued 10 of these. And so again, this is kind of tracking as if we really aren't ready to produce the last 10 here, but we're going to do it just to take a look at how that works. So here we are back in our agenda. We've talked about the two reports, but now we're going to go ahead and do the completion entry. So we're gonna do the completion entry for this particular work ticket, which does not have back flush as a processing option. And then we'll do another one with back flush. So here we are in Sage 100, and let's go ahead and do our transaction entry for that work ticket. So I'm gonna to go to work ticket transaction entry. We'll create a batch. We'll create a transaction for the completion. And we'll select our work ticket and we'll put in our quantity of one. And of course we can see that we're making it for the sales order and our quantity planned is one. So we'll go ahead and put the one in. And we'll go ahead and accept that. Now, before I leave the screen, let's see what happened here. I'll do a look up at transaction entry and you'll see that in fact, it created two other transactions. It created one other transaction for back flushing the labor. So it automatically created the labor transaction here and then it created a material transaction. Now before posting these, we can go ahead and call them up and look at them and make whatever changes that we wanna make. And in fact, we have to kind of do that for the material ones because we have some items that we're gonna to have to distribute because their valuation method is lot or serial. So let's go ahead and do that. So we need two of these. Now remember in production management, we hit the distribution and we choose the lot number there's our two for that. We'll go to the next one. We'll hit our distribution screen. In this case, we have serial number to distribute. So we'll do that one. We need to distribute a serial number here as well. So we'll find one that has available. We'll use that. A couple more. So distribute that. Now I'm looking at the little triangle over here and just making sure that goes away as I do this. That's the indicator that we have to do a distribution on that line. Looks like everything's been distributed. So we can go ahead and accept that. So now let's go ahead and post this completion. But along with the completion, we had the labor and material transactions. So we'll hit the little shortcut this time to go to the transaction journal slash update option. Select that batch, proceed. We'll go ahead and print the transaction journal. Now, because I'm putting finished goods into inventory, it's asking if I want to print the labels. I'll say no. It's asking if I want to update. So the first one you're seeing here is the labor transactions. So we have $105 in labor, and then we can see the material transactions, and we have 47, 87, 53 in material, including overhead. You add those together, and you get a total cost for the item going into inventory of 48.92.64. So let's go ahead and update that. So as we see this, when we do these completion entries, these completions go right into inventory. The item goes into inventory, is now available for sale. Once again, it doesn't matter what the make for is set to, either inventory, sales order, or another work ticket, the item still goes into inventory and then needs to come out of inventory to be issued to the other work ticket or to be sold on a sales order invoice. Back on our agenda, we've talked about the reports, the on-demand missing cost report, the on-demand variance from standards report. My advice is to go ahead and look at those reports prior to doing the completion, just to make sure you have the cost that you intended to have before you do the completions. And you very well may, I'm not saying that you won't, but you want to make sure that you have that so that you can catch those costs going into the work ticket. Now, once you've done your final completion, if there are other costs that you want to post to the work ticket, you can do that. But you won't have another completion to put the finished good into inventory. Now, when you do the close transaction, and we're going to talk about this next time, the close transaction will take those dollars out and put them in the variance account so that they'll account for those dollars, but at least your work ticket history will have those costs. But if you're doing the final completion, my opinion is that you want to make sure that you have as much of those costs as that you want into those 
work tickets prior to doing the completions, that final completion. So look at these reports. Then we did a simple example of doing a completion entry where the issue method for the labor material was not back flush, and we did another completion entry where the issue method for the labor material was back flush, so you can see that it automatically creates those transactions for you. You can contact us at our website, nimsassociates.com, you can find us on LinkedIn and YouTube or you can contact us at ERP at nimsassociates.com or give us a call at 877-454-3200, extension 6346. Thank you for your time today.